everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with a catch-up video or maybe part two to the last video I did. Um, I was talking about, I was going to put in that video these that I had used for um, bookends. Um, they're just some kind of composite wood. I don't know what it is, MDF or whatever it is. Um, so I drilled the holes this morning and look, I got it at the end of the, at the bottom of the word journal. Um, so I clamped them together like this. I took a ruler and measured it. I think this is a half an inch, quarter of an inch. Shoot, I forgot since last night. That's really bad. Yes, this one's half an inch. This is a quarter. This is a half. I only did it for visual interest, not because it will affect anything I'm sewing because they will all be in the same, same holes in the paper. Okay, so um, I clamped these together, did half an inch in, quarter inch in, and then I spaced them an inch from the bottom, in, or half an inch from the bottom, half an inch from the top, and I had two inches left in the middle, and then I did um, one hole halfway through between these two. The same goes for this one, but I put all my holes straight lined, nothing different. I just thought I'd make the other one a little different. All right, so I, ho I drill drilled those a few minutes ago, so there's the holes for that one. and my stuff stuck together overnight. <laughs> I had to pry the other ones apart. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. So this goes this way. So my initials are in the front. Where's my holes? Yeah. There we go. And then there's the holes in the front and the holes in the back. I got lucky there were no words on either one of these, so I was very happy that turned out that way. Although, I would like to get rid of the VB, you know, but anyway, so there's those two. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the paper for these, and I'm going to sew these together and put them on my little bookshelf that I keep all my little minis on. I made another mini last night. I watched a video, and I will put her name down below. I cannot remember it at this moment even after two cups of coffee. So I made this little tiny book with a belly band on it. I'm sorry, the light is just horrific. Oops, I put it up there. No, it didn't make any difference. Okay, so it's a fodder school flower with a belly band, which is like mind-numbingly simple. Another fodder school flower. The only sewing, the, what you do is you do the kettle stitch before on your signatures before you put them into, or they're glued into the book. These are not glued on the ends so that you can open up the book more readily. And as you can see, there's a big gap in there. That's for expansion and you can lay your book flat down. Now it does not lay down flat as well as a Coptic book does, but for a little teeny book that probably I will glue stuff in, I'm okay with it. I did not, um, it's sticking. Ugh. I did not do, the flap, the inside flap, the way she did, I misunderstood what she was doing. You glue the, well, you don't glue them. You put the signatures in. There's a, I have a rigid spine in here. That's the only thing that's rigid. The rest of this stuff is totally flexible. Even the cover is flexible. Um, she took this paper that was like this and she wrapped it around the ends and then put and papered. I did not do that because evidently I <laughs> was distracted by watching a Wyatt Earp documentary. <laughs> so I'm going to remake it again today, try another one with scraps, and I'm going to redo this. I don't want to cover this up because that means I'd have to put more paper on top of this. I would have to fold it over top of this and then I would glue this down over it so you can't see it because that's what this is. This is the front flap and the back flap of the last, the first signature and the last signature are glued to this piece of paper here. Hers was not exactly like that, but I was doing it for the concept of not having to do three hole pamphlet, not having to do Coptic. Um, I wanted to learn something new with a rigid, rigid spine and the rest of it flexible, which it is. So there's that one. Okay, so I think that about catches me up so far. Yes. Um, I 
showed you guys my uh, crates with the little mini books in them. And they're sitting on a shelf. I left them in the crates. I just thought they were so cute sitting in the crates. Let's see. So I will do this on camera, but I will probably fast forward through it and add music to this portion. And then I will catch you up on my next project in this video after you see the stuff for this. Okay, so I'm going to explain about reusing paper, recycling, repurposing, whatever you want to call it. This came from an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. I printed something on it, and you can see the print right here. I can't, you, I don't want to use that for something else. So this was one sheet of paper, and now that's going, it's too, not too, it's too wide. Okay, so let's try another one. <laughs> All right, this was one sheet of paper first, then it was cut down. I do two and seven eighths, two and seven eighths. This still isn't wide enough for what I want to use for an example. Okay, and then I cut it. Now, if this was a little bit wider, I would take this tiny, I would take this strip right here and cut it down to three quarters of an inch. This is too small, I'm not keeping this. Um, three quarters of an inch, and then I turn it to make half inch slices to make my mini books for Artemat. That is how I keep from buying so much paper. It's because I save these things because I know that there's going to be a project where I need a skinny piece of paper. So I've taken, I've got the stuff that I've shaved off so far. I've saved another pile. And then later on I will cut these in half, half inch widths. And then I will put them um, in a pile to cut for Artemat. Okay, so... I went through the box, I found the white paper. I didn't quite have enough of the stuff that was clamped together with the bowl clip, but I went back and found some other stuff and I had enough to put four, I think this is mostly all computer paper. So there are four pieces in each one of these signatures. Four? Yeah, four. Four pieces of paper in each signature and each signature is folded in half. So that's probably plenty. What I'd like to do to bulk it up is to put end papers on here, some kind of colored end papers, because in Coptic, the thing is, is you see this, and it's just boring white. So I was thinking I might take some jelly prints, maybe solid or a pattern, although solid would be better because pattern, you really can't see it because it's in such a tiny place that um, I think I'm going to find some jelly print you know, some cast-offs, and wrap my stuff in that, and it will bulk my book, book up just a wee bit more, so it's, you know, got a nice size spine on it. All right, so there's that one. All right, so let's talk about recycling and reusing. All these are offcuts at varying sizes. Basically, they're about the same size as 
They're, most of them are about the same size as each other. They're in graduating sizes here, and this is the widest one. I'm not even sure this one's part of what I was using. Anyway, so there's that. And then I have these, again, in graduating sizes. Now, you can jelly print these and use these for your, well, I don't know what you call it, the, the square journaling stuff where they, I mean, um, I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, you can use these and, and glue them in a journal. You can make pockets out of them. You can sew them. You can dye them. You can paint them. You can doodle on them. Whatever you want to do. I am not doing that. So what I was thinking was that, you know, I have an Etsy store. And when I get an Etsy order, I always try to send some kind of mini book in with my order. So I thought if I take these and cut them in half, like fold them in half, then cut them in half, I could make lots of freebies for my shop and honestly this paper has been used this would be the third time I would be using it out of one eight and a half by eleven these were off cuts from an eight and a half by eleven which were cut down to make the signatures for this and then I'm going to make mini books for my Etsy store to give as gifts for my sales I can't see waste in this these are large enough sl slices I would really like to keep these. They're, they're big enough to do something else with. If I was thinking about, I mean, if I really want to go through all the trouble, I could make these coffee dyed papers and make a small coffee journal. But I have so many journals that are in process. I've got one, two, three, four, four or five journals. Like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I have five journals that are whips right now. And I don't want to start another large sort of project, and I don't want to dye these guys. I just don't feel like putting forth the effort to dye them. I can make them white, and somebody can glue stuff in them. It doesn't matter. I don't really care. But I'm going to give them as a freebie for Etsy orders because it's easy. And it helps me hone my sewing skills, which are very limited. <laughs> I will not do these on the machine. I will probably do kettle stitch or a three-hole pamphlet stitch or a five-hole stitch, whatever, um, because these are small and it's just easier to do that kind of thing than it is to make a larger one and fuss around with dyeing stuff. i just rather keep it simple. I, w I have... I think I have enough here that I could do... Four or five little teeny, teeny books. So this might be a project in the future on a video. I would like to use the concept. I don't know where the book went. I know it's here somewhere. Yeah, pooey. The uh, purple book that I had up here earlier that has the belly band on it. It has run off with the spoon and the fork to uh, jump over the moon. I have no idea where it is. <laughs> I just had it. Okay, so it's gone. Anyway, so I think I'm. that's what I might try to do is... I'm patting down everything like that's really going to find it. And there it is! Ta-da! Okay, so that's what I want to try to do is... I, I think I might try to learn this method better. I will do the kettle stitch on so many little teeny um, signatures and then use some of the dyed paper that I have that are small pieces like this to cover the spine and cover the book itself. And then I will do the right way to, to cover it instead of using a piece of paper to cover and gluing it to the first page. I will do what she did, glue this on and then wrap it around and then glue the first page onto it to cover up where you glued around the edges. So this will probably be an Etsy store giveaway too because this is not the proper way she meant for it to be. Um, so I just, you know, I'm having all these little ideas because to be honest with you, I have a very short attention span where certain things are involved and this might be, the, the little books help to satisfy my need to create and their short little projects because um, I'm all in with Artemat and... I don't always have time to do this stuff unless I play way ahead in Artemat and then take a couple weeks off. So 
this satisfies my, my need to create. Anyway, so I'm going to make something out of these, which will be in a future video. Okay, so now I have to sew. Ugh. Okay, so this is a new day because I finished a bunch of stuff yesterday and then sat here and looked at it. <laughs> I mean, it's a thing, I swear. <laughs> All right, here are the two um, bookends that I drilled holes in to make Coptic books out of. This one has the holes staggered, half an inch, quarter inch, half an inch. And then I went through my, uh, I don't know what you call it, miscellaneous papers in one of those Ikea drawers I purged a couple weeks ago. And I found paper that, I'm not sure exactly where this stuff came from. This is like parchment paper type stuff. And I covered my signatures in this to kind of pump them up a little bit. And I just found some painty paper in there. I really like this dark painty paper. And then some kind of uh, antique looking, <laughs> could be the Constitution for all I know. Um, and so I put them together. I was going to do colors, but I got distracted by vintage looking papers. I don't know. Squirrel. Anyway, so that's this one. And I have chosen the waxed red linen because of the red VB. This one has the holes drilled in a straight line, half an inch from the edge. So I was on a roll with the paper, and so I went a little nuts. Here is, um, somebody sent me like this vintage looking thing out of a catalog, and I cut that, I folded it, it was like a little bigger than a five by seven, so I folded it height-wise, is that how you say it? So that it's longer than it is wide. And I cut it into, I think I got three pieces out of it. And I kind of, I, I mixed up the signatures so that it didn't have all of one kind of paper in a row. There's that uh, paper, I can't tell you what it is. Then I found this stuff, and unfortunately the good stuff is on the back of it. It looks like a, a photocopy of vintage classes, roll call, bookkeeping, I don't know, some kind of thing like that. And then that funny paper. This is some kind of a parchment paper, I think. Um, a whole bunch of us ordered some of it a while ago because I thought it was such cool paper, and then I've never done anything with it. Still in the original bag I got it in. Then I found somebody did, and I, I'm not sure who this belongs to, um, cough, I think they coffee dyed this and then did a bunch of, uh, it looks like it might have been a stencil with a bunch of holes in it, which I thought was rather interesting. And then just repeats of the other stuff we went over. So there's this one. Yeah. And I have chosen the blue, although... I did look at a gold color wax thread, but I thought, no, let's do the blue. Although, see, I think the gold would blend in too much with the vintage paper, so I'm going to do the dark blue for like this and like this. I like things that are kind of matchy-matchy. All right, so I'm going to sew these together, and then I will be back with the finished books because who wants to watch me do another Coptic Stitch book? Probably nobody. Anyway, <laughs> I'll be back with these when they're all sewn. I'm going to watch YouTube while I sew these. We'll see how they turn out after watching TV and trying to sew at the same time. Okie doke. Um, an hour later. <laughs> watching too many legal videos. <laughs> uh, let's see. This is the one. It's finished. I can barely see the blue. The thing I don't like about all these colored wax threads is they look really beautiful in the package until it drags through the paper and stuff. It drags the wax off as it's going through the paper and it lessens the intensity of the color. If you notice, well, maybe not. Uh, where's my needle? 
there is a difference in the intensity and the color. See how it looks light blue? It really is light blue now. That's the only thing I don't like about the wax thread, although it goes through the paper right nicely, I have to say. I mean, you know, there's good and there's bad, but the thing is, is it, it does get lighter as it goes through because the wax is scraped off as you go through it over and over and over. It does scrape the wax off of the thread. Okay, so if you were hoping to get that dark red intensity, which I always hope for, eh, not getting it. All right, so here's the blue one where all the holes were lined up in the same line. Uh, oh, this one's upside down. Nice. <laughs> or maybe, my, is my book upside? No, my book is right side up. Everything is upside down. <laughs> Let's do it this way. Wait, oh, now it's right side up. <laughs> okay, what a goober. All right, so everything's right side up. I have the book wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I think I'm gonna need another cup of coffee um, so the blue is finished um, I did rip a, a little bit larger hole than I would have liked in this delicate paper stuff here so I did take a piece of scotch tape the see-through kind I think it was yeah right here um, I did put it over like from here and around the other side to bolster the hole. Otherwise, it's going to rip. That's what happens when you use delicate paper and you pull a little too hard. It does tend to ruin the hole. But a little scotch tape will fix that. All right. And definitely alligator mouth. And there's nothing in it yet. I can't wait to see how big it gets once I start gluing stuff in there. <laughs> But I have a solution. I have your basic Dollar Tree ponytail holder. And there we have it. Then, this is the one that was in red where the holes are staggered. You can barely see it on camera. It's this, this is the half inch, quarter inch, half inch. I don't... On a book that has... Uh, other distractions, you really can't tell it too much on camera. I mean, it doesn't, well, you can see it a little bit, but it's much better in person. All right, so this one is all sewn together. Everything seems right side up. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> okay, so it's all, all sewn. So the two Coptic items that were, um, shoot, what's the word? bookends, which were bookends for minis, are now Coptic books because I just couldn't see, they just did not work well as um, bookends because one of these, the glued part, you know, the part that went out this way, kept falling off. I kept re-gluing it and finally I just quit using it. So I would use three out of four and then the second one fell off and I'm like, okay, this is the universe trying to tell me this was a really dumb idea. <laughs> Either that or... E6000 is not as good as I thought it was. So I went ahead and made books with these, and I probably will dust dust off of them for a while before I go to use them. I'm not going to lie. It might take some time. I have like 7,000 little books up on my bookshelf. I keep thinking, well, I'll put stuff in them. No. No. I don't think so. It's like an unfinished knit project. Sometimes it just languishes in the closet all alone. And then one day the light comes on and they're whisk away to make something. Like I have a sweater that's probably 15 or 16 years old. The only thing I need to do is finish like the bottom portion of the leaves and the cuff and it's done. Will I finish it? I'm thinking I'm probably going to pull it out. Yep. I'm thinking I'm probably going to pull it out. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Alrighty. So that's these. 